What is up YouTube, Lunar here, and today it will be episode 2, I guess, of the uh, the new Adobe Tutorials. Um, in this episode, I will just be going over, um, like, well, you have the program open, well now what do I do? Well, you want to start a project, probably. So, I'm going to be going through a few of the, some project basics that I, that I think, and um, I'll actually be starting a project uh, of my own and you guys can follow along or you guys can start your own project using some of the tips I tell you um, but anyway let's get into it so uh, I'm gonna hit new I'm gonna name this I'm, I'm actually gonna end up trying to make um, a rough little uh, bowling team logo so let's name this uh, I'll just do bowling logo uh, yeah and then 10 by 10 is fine and then I'll hit OK, and there will be a giant white screen. Okay, uh, there's not a white screen anymore. Okay, so I have my artboard. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. Um, so for this bowling logo, I did a little bit of um, research ahead of time. You know, I know what a bowling ball looks like, but the three little holes in it. Uh, I just wanted to get a couple different ideas of how those are portrayed. So. Uh, to place in images that you find off of the internet, you can either go to File and then Place. Uh, I like using key commands, so I'm going to do Shift Control P, and it should pull up whatever file search thing you use. So I have my two bowling balls right here. You can select both at the same time and hit both or place for both, and you'll see you comes up with this. This is like where do you want to place the images? So I usually place them off of the artboard since I will be making art on the artboard. Um, so I'm gonna place one over here, and just so you guys can see what I mean, you can place one like right there. And the library's popped up. Go away. Um, okay, so I have a smaller one and a larger one. I'll shrink this one a little bit because I don't need it to be that big, and I'll enlarge this one just a tad. Okay, so to start this off. Uh, I want to get a background color so uh, you don't necessarily have to have a background color but it helps to put the um, the object that you're working on on top of something and since I work with uh, t-shirts a lot I will usually make the background color like a t-shirt color um, okay so I don't need an outline color for it and the fill I'll probably just make a neutral let's just make it like um, a blue color people like blue uh, okay, so maybe green or lime. I don't know. Let's just leave it lime. That's pretty cool. Okay, so now I'm going to organize a little bit more. Um, when I'm working on stuff, I don't like to be able to move the background color because you see the white behind it. Um, so I usually like to put the background rectangle color on its own layer. So I'll make a new layer here, move the rectangle onto that layer and switch it to the bottom and then I will lock it so that you can't move it anymore. You can't select it, you can't do anything to it. It's there. And to lock things, you there's a little box right here. It says toggles lock editable when bl editable when blank. So with the lock there, it means you can't use it. I'll turn the lock off just by clicking and I can move it. Okay, so simple as that. And you can also turn off layers by hitting the eyeball too. So like say I want to see the white but I don't want to move it or unlock it you can just toggle it off like that and I'll show you with the balls there you go the balls are gone <laughs> okay so let's get started a bowling ball a simple shape um, so I'll just get the circle tool and you'll see right now that I have a pencil with a no-no sign that means that I have the locked layer selected and you cannot do anything on the locked layer um, okay so I gotta select layer one so now you have a different uh, little pointer and so I'll do a circle and to get a circle, like a perfect circle, you hold shift while you enlarge it, or like drag it to enlarge it. If you don't hold shift, you get an oval. Pretty cool. Um, okay, so there's my circle. Bowling balls are black. Um, I'll make it gray just because I can. And there we go. Now we have the simple bowling ball. Okay, so let's say that you're like me and you are super paranoid about things being perfectly centered with everything else. There's easy ways to do this. Um, I have it up here. There's this little box, Align to Selection. Um, so I'm going to select this box and you'll see Align to Selection or Align to Artboard. The difference between these two things, I'm going to make another circle so I can demonstrate it. And I'll make this one yellow so that you can see the circle. Okay, so if I align these two objects to selection, 
um, with this button right here, horizontal align center, it will align the two objects with each other. So there, they're centered with each other, but not necessarily centered with the artboard. Um, if I change it to align with artboard, well, actually, hang on, let me undo that so that they're wonky again. If I do align to artboard and then hit the same button, it will align them both centered with each other, but also perfectly with the artboard. So it's just like different things that you'll need to center to or whatever. So I'm going to delete this because I don't need it. And so I have aligned artboard selected, so it's centered um, horizontally, but let's center it vertically. So you see it shifted up a little bit. So now it's perfectly in the middle of your square artboard or rectangle artboard. Um, okay, so let's continue. So the hall, the holes on the ball. Um, I, these would be easier to make, but they're a little bit unrealistic. <laughs> As you can see, it's kind of clip art. So I'm gonna zoom in on these and I'm going to just draw some holes over these until they look about right. This one looks pretty circular, um, so I'm going to do that like that. And you can nudge objects that you have selected by hitting the arrow keys over a little bit, just so that you don't have to move it with the mouse. You can get more precise movements that way. And then these look kind of like ovals, so I'll just make an oval maybe like that, and then you can see they're kind of tilted a little bit, so I'll get it like this and tilt it some. And yeah, I like that. Okay, so, and you also see different things, like when you have an object selected, uh, I'll do this one since it's not perfectly round. Um, you see this makes it longer like that, and you see this makes it wider like this, and you see this is like diagonal, and then if you hold it kind of over the edge, you'll get like a turning symbol and that means that you're able to rotate it around the central point um, but I'm gonna leave it like this for now uh, okay so now what I would do instead of trying to replicate this oval over here I'm just going to hold alt no not alt hold can um, what button is it it is alt okay I just didn't have it selected if you hold alt um, on the object it pulls up a double arrow one will be black one will be white and then if you drag it it actually pulls off a copy so like here's my copy and you see it's like that so what I'll do now is I will reflect it so if you go to object transform and then reflect um, I want to reflect it horizontally so that it matches this one and I'll hit OK and so there you go now you have um, I'll turn this off so you can see what I've done. Now I have the two holes mirrored perfectly and then a thumb hole. Uh, so I like this. This looks uh, pretty good to me. So let's take these and actually I'm, I'm just that anal about things being the right size. I'm gonna bring this circle over here um, and I'll recolor it for now. That looks kind of funny. <laughs> Uh, and I'm gonna make it a, a stroke color instead of a fill so I can see how big to make it compared to an actual bowling ball so I'll change that back make it gray again and these are the exact same color so let me make these holes like a lighter gray like that and um, you can select multiple items like I just did because if you just select one it'll just move that and you'll get frustrated and you'll be like oh why can't I move everything but if you click one thing and then click and hold shift and then click other items, you can move everything at once. You see all of it's moving. Okay, so now that I have my bowling ball shape, uh, I need to, I'm gonna enlarge it again now that everything's um, relative size. Uh, I'm, I need to center everything with each other. So I'm going to group these two items. Otherwise, if I don't group them and I center them, this will happen, they'll be on top of each other. Uh, so I'm going to group them by selecting both of them, and I will do Control G on Mac. It's Command G, or you can also do Object Group. And so, like now they're grouped. Once you select one, it selects the other. So if you want to move one, it moves them both. Um, so now, when you select everything, uh, you you know just drag a box or whatever, and you center it, they won't be on top of each other because they are grouped. Um, Okay, so now I want to put it back in the very middle of my artboard. 
Um, as you can see, if I move this down some, it's not perfectly centered anymore. So what I'll do is I'll probably just group the whole thing so that it's all one object. And then I'll just group it with, or not group it, but align it with the artboard again. So now we have a vector bowling ball that is centered within the artboard very nicely. Um, and I'll probably finish up this video uh, adding a couple finishing touches. Okay, so I like the way this looks without the little um, little crescent shape in there. I think it looks pretty cool. So this is the start of a, an ongoing project. It won't be like a part one or part two because this is a video in itself. Like I, I covered what I wanted to and uh, in the next video I'll cover something new um, that adds to this same logo that I am making and you guys can make. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and it made sense. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.